the end of the world as we know it, which according to my new cult will happen before October 1st of 2015. <laughs> or the fact that I kind of believe it's going to happen. <laughs> um, it all started about a year and a half ago when my mom mentioned to me on the phone that she's made some new friends. <laughs> Good mom, I'm so glad you're feeling part of the community. Community. That's where they get you. <laughs> uh, these new friends, a small group of folks in rural Ohio, are kind, generous, and the most persuasive motherfuckers I've ever met. Myself. <laughs> my mom got involved with them because they conduct research to replace the unmarked graves at what used to be an insane asylum in Athens, Ohio. Um, it's really honorable work, actually, because they replace it with the names of the people who are really buried there. Uh, my mom's really big into gene genealogy and Ancestry.com, and she was eager to lend her mad stalking skills to the group. <laughs> After she was part of the group for a while and proved her dedication, the leaders of the group, Doug, a talented blacksmith in overalls and charcoal pans, and his wife, Berta, a soft, brown-skinned healer, revealed to my mom that there's more to this group than marking grapes. <laughs> Soon after Doug was contracted for some black work, blacksmith work on the asylum property, he was channeled through a spirit named Adam, <laughs> who identified Doug as a human who will transmit information that most, most of us refuse to hear. This is the beginning of the downward sanity spiral. <laughs> now, I knew about part of this from conversations on the phone with my mom, but mostly laughed it off and didn't, she didn't tell me a whole lot. Or maybe it was just easier for me to downplay it when I hung up the phone. However, on my first morning back, as I sat on my mom's front porch watching birds and chipmunks and occasional deer, <laughs> my mom broke out the big guns of crazy, and it started to sting. We travel in tribes, Berta explains to me. <laughs> I'm now sitting in the leader's, on the leader's dining room table uh, in a lovely, comfortable cabin in the country, ten miles from my mom's house. She wanted me to meet them, so here I am, snacking on chips and hummus and grapes while I hear about how we've all been reincarnated many times, and we continue to stick with those we know. Supposedly, most in this new group, Ted's group, I'm not actually sure who Ted is, I think he's one of the spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in this group has some kind of connection with the Athens Insane Asylum as either a patient or a doctor. That seems fitting, right? I can't make this shit up. <laughs> uh, I hear about how Doug was a regular guy, a simple blacksmith, until he began to get channeled, and that he refused it for a really long time, not wanting to bear this burden, recognizing how insane it made him look. My mom admits that their recognition of this woo-woo-ness, the term that she now uses in lieu of crazy, is the only saving grace in this scenario. She's a skeptic, like I am, and is resisting the urge to drink the Kool-Aid, but she's still investing in its stock. The guidance, Adam the spirit, channels Doug through writings, visions, and through Doug's vocal cords. They light a candle when Doug is able to go into that space, and Doug steps aside consciously to allow for Adam to speak. That's how they ask him questions and find out the details. At the table, sitting with my mom and Berta, I listen to what they know. Here's what I recall. The government is already in action, distributing military bases and closed down Walmarts and with underground tunnels. <laughs> They've been testing big devices that can wipe out electricity in large areas immediately. They're distracting us and dividing us right now with black versus white, Planned Parenthood insanity, election hoo-ha, the Confederate flag, anything that can make us the people pay attention to otherness and not feel uh, the, wa the water warming in our pan. The exact catalyst to all this is unknown, but Adam very specifically said that the end of September of this year is a turning point and they should be prepared for it. Mother Earth will stop the big government destruction by causing an onset of natural disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, big winds. The, the mass destruction will be too much for the government to handle, and, uh, and as history shows, the people will get violent. When hunger strikes and imminent danger threatens people and their families, when medicine and food and basic services are no longer within reach, when fear takes over, humans become evil and hell surfaces. Katrina is a good example of this. Syria is a good example of this. This part is fact. Regardless of anything else, getting on a boat you know may kill you to escape war, that is hell. That is the end of the world as we know it, and that is why this group needs to be prepared. So with kindness and love leading, this incredibly brilliant small group began preparing their farm for isolation. <laughs> I walked to their property. They have chickens and goats, greenhouses, gardens galore, 
buildings that pump, catch, and purify water and gravity systems to get the buildings, gardens, animals, and everywhere water is needed to get the water there. There are tractors, horses, giant blacksmith building that Doug teaches classes in. They have engineered systems that I can't even begin to explain because that's not a skill that I offer the group. <laughs> Stacks of wood fill a property to feed the many wood-burning stoves and fireplaces. They have homes that the few committed families have built. Spaces they're storing clothes, food for three years, toys and entertainment. There's even an Anne Frank root cellar, hidden behind a, jar, a large cabinet that stores a giant bulk of food and supplies. It would also function as a hiding place for the children if necessary, says Berta. Uh -oh. I walk through this property, see everything that they have to offer me, with the blanket understanding that this is to prepare for the very likely catastrophe that is way too near. There's no scam, or at least I have yet to see it. The small group of folks aren't even trying to spread fear. They simply want to be prepared as possible and assemble a team of people who can offer something unique. My mom, who's, who's been a certified nurse midwife her whole life, will be head of medical. She's already filled cabinets with medical supplies. Someone else is head of security, another leads of agriculture, etc. I start to feel self-conscious about what I have to offer. I teach theater. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Tears fill my eyes while I'm standing in the root cellar. I ask, who is this group missing? What skills are lacking to thrive here? I've been sucked in. I believe it all. I'm fucking terrified, and I don't know if it's because my mom has lost her shit, or because I believe it too. Berta takes my shoulders, her eyes filled with water. She looks me in the eyes with the most healing open heart and says, You. You are what's missing. But I lack serious survival skills, I reply. I don't have anything to offer this community. I want to use art for healing. I can't do any of this. Berta smiles and squeezes my shoulder. You just proved it. Your intentions for the good of the group and your open heart is what we need. This is when Berta and my mom share a glance. Berta softly says to me, I'd like you to hear what Adam told your mom about you. Come back inside. I blindly follow her back into the house. She disappears upstairs for a few minutes, comes back with a small tape recorder. She hits play and her voice is heard documenting the date. June 5, 2015. Rustling is then heard and in silence and Doug steps aside and Adam enters. Adam speaks in a different intonation, using words simple country Doug doesn't even know, a rhythm of another person. I listen to him warn about the big winds and assure that the catalyst for change isn't the asteroid heading towards Earth. That'll be diverted. Bear <laughs> <laughs> to fast forwards and rewinds until, my, until we hear my mom ask a question. My mom is feeling anxious that none of her kids believed her and that if something awful happens and wipes out life as we know it, uh, she wants her children to be saved too. Adam says to my mom, as I heard with my own ears, via Doug, of course, don't give up hope yet, Margaret. More will be in your party than you expect. They wanted me to hear it directly. Oh, God, I'm seeing it. I start to see my life living on this farm. I start to see the simplicity of the you know, living, while the majority of the world lives in chaos and destruction. Yeah, I mean, if something happens, this is where I want to be. These people can actually live through <laughs> They take me up to the hill to one of the few cabins. I look around and see a stool I recognize, then a bag, then over a stack of food containing a, a stack of food that resembles the same kind of products I grew up with, except that there's enough of it for one year for at least two people. This is my mom's cabin. There are two cots. This is our space. There's always free will, says Berta. Anything could change, and you get to choose which path you take, but we invite you in. Is it better to just die in the destruction than live with a bunch of crazies in the woods for three years? <laughs> I don't even believe in God, so sitting there at this table, walking the land, hearing this kind healer graciously open her arms to me, I'm in shock. I'm in tears. I am terrified that it's real, and I'm terrified if it's not. They're either insane whack jobs, which means my mother's health has collapsed, and what am I going to do about that? Or it's true, and I have to be one of the survivors. <laughs> the fact that I'm even entertaining this notion, in the very least, it is proof that I'm off my rocker, too. I know I want to belong. I know I'm at a very vulnerable time in my life where I'm seeking answers and guidance. I know I'm paralyzed, and I don't see my life continuing the way it is. So has everything led me to this? And when death is looking you in the eyes, why not believe just in case, right? <laughs> On my last night in Ohio, before flying back to Los Angeles, I sat in my brother's living room, desperately searching for a sign. A segment started on the Science Nature station that was a pseudo-news update. Two anchor-type people excitingly updated viewers about the fourth harvest moon that this year, uh, this year that, the fourth harvest moon this year that also coincides with the fall equinox, the red moon, blood moon, and the super moon, all in one night. 
this huge natural expected phenomenon that uh, the rarest in 30 years. Sunday, September 27 at 9.47 p.m. Eastern Time, join your neighbors and look up at that moon, folks, <laughs> said the anchor man. That's about as clear of a sign one can get when searching for an answer to, should I get on that plane? <laughs> I got on the plane. Maybe my past lives have led me to this point, or I'm not ready, and I'm not ready to survive. Maybe somehow I'll find myself flying back to Ohio, or driving cross country, or joining a different group to survive. Likely nothing will happen at all, you know. Life as we know it will continue as planned. My regular crazy life of working and paying bills and succumbing to the mediocrity of my life will continue. I don't know. I do know that it's actually pretty incredible that I'm as functioning as I am with the familial genes that I was dealt. <laughs> I do know I'll be looking up at that moon on September 27, tonight. Praying that we humans can react with kindness and generosity and start to evolve into what we need to be without a giant natural or man-made event. But history and my intuition believes otherwise. And so if the end of the world, as we know it, is to happen, why would it not be now? Mm -hmm. <laughs>